Today's episode of the Four Seasons of Film podcast is brought to you by Phil's Coffee. Phil's specializes in handcrafted coffee made one cup at a time. Visit a location today or find them on the web at philscoffee.com. That's Phil's with a Z, coffee.com. Find the beans you're looking for. Welcome to the Four Seasons of Film Podcast, episode 323. I'm your host, Nathan Robert Blackburn. We're talking big podcast this week. We're talking three guests. Two of them have phoned in from one internationally, one from the East Coast, and one is sitting here right in front of us. I'm talking about filmmaker Jagger Moore. Hello, Jagger. Hello again. And back, you might have you might think you've heard this guest before, and we probably introduced her as the as our Disney enthusiast. But you know what? That falls under multiple umbrellas nowadays. And we did promise we'd bring her back for the Star Wars episode. So welcome back to the podcast, Samantha Brown. Thank you so much for having me back. And last but not least, another, we're going to call this our Star Wars specialist. Mr. Joey Velez is joining the podcast. Welcome for the first time to the Four Seasons of Film, Joey. All right. I, I, I think that, that, uh, that title works for me. I like the sound of that. The specialist? Yeah, yeah. Goes. I think the specialist kind of sounds like you guys are hitmen for hire. Yeah. That's why it's kind of badass. You're you're yeah. a Star Wars specialist. You're kind of like Boba Fett. Like yeah, like I'm, he's not a, he's not an expert. He's not up there on Darth level, but but you know he's not just a peon. He's not a little stormtrooper. Like he knows what's going on. Oh sh- oh shit! Andy's here too. Hi, Andy. I find your lack of faith disturbing, <laughs> especially when I don't introduce you. Ah, I was waiting, but you're so not memorable anyway. Yeah, um, I know. I know everybody's really impressed that I I, I had the Boba Fett reference first now because here here's the full disclosure to begin to all our fans out there if this is the first time you're listening to us i don't claim that i know anything about disney films marvel films or the star wars franchise so any facts that you hear are wrong we're gonna blame on joey and sam this week Woo! yeah because <laughs> you guys call us when something's wrong you, that's that's why you're here i might get names dates um they don't say dates in this franchise though in the star wars right a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But we have no idea really when when this exists, right? Mm-hmm. A long time ago. A long time ago <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away. It's so vague. I yep. love it. On purpose. There so full disclosure, we don't know that much, even though we'll get in my history and everybody's history with the Star Wars franchise. But any mistakes, you know, call us out on it. That's fine. But I'm really looking at our armchair experts in, in Sam and Joey, if that's cool with you two. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm okay. in. I'm down. All right, let's go through... Obviously, tonight's episode is Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. I nailed it, man. I thought I was going to so mess up that title. No, you got it. <laughs> oh, so good. Uh, so, yeah, it's The Rise of Skywalker. We are, we're going to point out that if you haven't seen the movie, turn this off right now. Thanks for the download. But turn it off until you have seen the movie, because we're going to go right in. We're going to go full spoilers, talk about everything that's wrong, right, you know, plot holes, uh, this is just my criticism. <laughs> Everything that happens in the movie, I want to cover based on everybody's feelings about it the first time they saw it. Now, did anybody see this movie twice? <laughs> not yet, but yeah, I will yet. be soon. Okay, you're going to go see it twice. Jager scoffed, so put that down on the tally mark. Okay, that's good. Um, I, I didn't expect I didn't expect Jager to see it yet. So no, Jake. Jager actually had we had an agreement. Tell us about that, Jager. You said you wouldn't pay cash money to see this. Right, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not wasting my money. I hate that I even contributed to the box office. <laughs> <laughs> but you did you did you do we reimburse you for this? I hope yes. Okay, I've so you didn't spend your money on this. Yeah, but it's important to get all sides of the Star Wars argument. This is the last episode for a while, and they had to sew up the you know the the final one in the the new trilogy. I think that's what I'm calling it. What do we what do we call this one? The new trilogy? Yeah, sure. The uh, non-canon the trilogy. Sequel, sequel trilogy. Yeah. Sequel trilogy. But it doesn't have a name like Marvel Universe or anything? It's the Star Wars no, Universe. The Skywalker sequel trilogy because there's the expanded Star Wars Universe with other episodes and TV series, animated cartoons. But this is part of the Skywalker saga, yes. Okay, Skywalker saga. That's why we bring her in and that's why Andy's wrong. I love this. <laughs> it's all it's all fiction. It's all bullshit. It's all bad for you. No. 
Okay, so spoiler free. Here we go. But no, first, not spoiler no, 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 it's not spoiler. Oh free. shit! It's the opposite of spoiler free. Okay, all right. It's like tennis. We're gonna go back and forth on this debate. But I want to go into what our individually, what our histories are with the Star Wars saga. And I will go first, and I'll try to keep it brief. Growing up, Star Wars meant a lot to my mother. So that means I, it meant a lot to me because I wanted to have a dialogue with my mother about movies. She didn't necessarily want to watch, you know, uh, Citizen Kane every weekend like I was watching, but she did like these movies to a degree where she was the original Star Wars enthusiast. Not a specialist because I, I don't think even if you said Ewok to her today, she'd know what you're talking about. <laughs> she was more of a Star Trek. She was more of a Star Trek nerd, oh, yeah. like straight up. She still wears the pin to this day. Like she loves the Star Wars, uh, the Star Trek, right? So Star Wars came along and like everything she was into, Lord of the Rings, Star Trek, Star Wars. It took me a long time to actually watch it. And when I did, I fell in love with it like everybody else. I, I probably have seen the original trilogy, you know, 10, 15, 20 times in its entirety. It's one of those movies I go back to just because I want to feel like being a kid again. Something, Sam, I lied to you and said I can't do last week no, on the Frozen 2 podcast. Yeah. But I just realized I didn't lie. I just remember that I could do that. So that's good. I can I could watch those original movies and, and act like a child again and feel good about that. So the prequels came out, and like a lot of people, I was really disappointed in them. Grew to like them for the movies that they were. Uh, in particular, I, I think Phantom Menace is the most underrated of all Star Trek films in existence. Star I actually Wars. think... Star Wars. Shit, Star Wars. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. See Jagger's in there. But yeah, Phantom Menace is my, my pick for most underrated film. It gets a lot of shit for Jar Jar, and I'm not defending Jar Jar, but just from a storyline, I think it's perfect A yeah. to B to C, uh, including the drama. And then the new franchise came out, and... I really felt that the the Force Awakens was just a remake of A New Hope, but J.J. Abrams style. I still enjoyed it, but I haven't watched it since I saw it in the theater. I'm in the minority that I loved The Last Jedi, and we'll get into that, I'm sure, based on Sam's reaction. <laughs> and uh, the new one, I'm happy to say I enjoyed it, but full honesty, it felt like it was uh, it was a remake of another Star Wars movie I'd already seen in J.J. Abrams style. So those, I feel like I'm in the same place I was about the first new one. I can never remember that. The Force Awakens, that's the one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's where I'll start. But I want to hand it over to Sam. Why don't you tell us your, your history with Star Wars? Um, my history is similar to your own, uh, Nathan. Um, I grew up watching Star Wars with my parents we had them on vhs i just remember being so scared of so many of the elements in star wars like darth vader scared me uh luke's hand getting chopped off scared the shit out of me but what really resonated with me and i'm sure i'll you know uh mention it later on as well was uh the princess leia character so that Princess Leia kept bringing me back to Star Wars and eventually like I wasn't as scared of Darth Vader and all those other scary things that were in Star Wars originally. Um, and then when the prequel trilogy came out, we saw Phantom Menace in theater. It was me, my mom, and my brother. So yeah, I guess that's that's my history with the Star Wars film. And how about the new ones? The new ones... The Force Awakens, uh, I really enjoyed because I'm back in that universe again, back with the Skywalkers. Last Jedi <laughs> wasn't my favorite. It it just didn't it didn't feel like a Star Wars movie to me, and I had a lot of problems with it. Um, but now that the sequel trilogy has concluded, I have a newfound let's say, respect for The Last Jedi. Still not my favorite, but I can understand what Ryan Johnson was trying to do with it. And then The Rise of Skywalker, I enjoyed. I'm just kind of, I'm upset with a lot of elements, but at the same time was really happy with some. And I'm just really upset and sad that the Skywalker saga is over now. So I get it. We'll get yeah. into it. 
<laughs> no, thank you, Sam. Joey, tell us about your uh, relationship and your history with the Star Wars franchise. You know, for me, like, not really too in-depth. Like, I think for me, I've just always been into, like, these sort of sci-fi, like, space kind of movies sort of thing. That's why my, I always say my two favorite movies of all time are, are Star Wars and The Matrix, just because there's something about that, you know, um, that extraterrestrial world or whatever you want to call it, that fantasy world that just excites me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then I even think back to, you know, when the original three came out, right? So episodes four or five and six, you know, while I was young when I first saw them, like I still remember being like, how the hell are they going to come out with the middle part of a series? <laughs> you know, so I think that just kind of um, drew me into it even more. So that's kind of my relationship with it. And, you know, going back to what you were saying about the Phantom Menace, like, I, don't, I don't know why. I think just for me, like, I think episodes one and two are just boring. I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't watch them. Um, you know, I, I'm, well, I will say, like, I do miss Darth Maul and I love, I feel like he should have gotten more love. Like, he's probably one of my favorite characters, but he didn't really do anything. But, so when I heard you say that you enjoyed Phantom Menace, I just started shaking my head like, no, there's, there's, there's no way. Oh, believe me, I get that. I get that response all the time. <laughs> yeah, people are like, don't even start with this. Well, and now that even people will, you know, uh, people have seen the Rise of Skywalker and they're putting their lists on Twitter and whatever social media site. And mm-hmm. every time I look, what's the bottom two? It's Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. For know, sure. So. And uh, I agree with that. Um, uh, Attack of the Clones is my least favorite one. Yeah, yeah, you know, and you know, with with this last one, uh, Rise of Skywalker, like, you know, I enjoyed it, but it's Star Wars, so I'm always going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of feel the same way as you, like, I felt like I had already seen it, yeah, like with just a different scenario, different characters. Like, I felt that I just watched the same movie, there was just a couple of different scenes along the way. Um, and not to mention, I had to go take a bathroom halfway through, so I probably missed something important, but you had to do what I tried to. I had, I had to go to the restroom midway through, so oh. I'm, I'm hoping I picked a dead time. <laughs> we'll ask you when that was, and we'll get into it later. But yeah, um, okay. did you did you like the Force Awakens and the uh, the second one, The Last Jedi? <laughs> I'm so bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, obviously, I've shared my opinion with you before, and I'm glad to do it on the podcast. But what, in the Last Jedi, like once Leia did her Superman <laughs> move, that oh, just gosh. turned me off to that whole oh, episode. Gosh. Mm-hmm. You and Jagger too. Yeah, like mm-hmm. it was. I was know, turned off way before that. <laughs> <laughs> like I look, I I mean, like I said, it's Star Wars. I'm always going to enjoy it, but you know, Episode Eight was was pretty weak to me. Force Awakens. I mean, it was it was all right. I just think these last three, everything just felt rushed. You know, mm-hmm. so I mean, do I enjoy them? Yeah, uh, I would say probably at the last three, this one was my favorite, but I don't really think that's saying much. Ah, see, there's an honest answer from a Star Wars specialist, fan, nerd, I mean, what whatever you want to call it, okay? <laughs> You're looking at me like I invented this term. Fuck you, Andy. <laughs> no, but that uh, that's refreshing to hear. And to yeah. follow that refreshing note, thank you, Joey, let's hear from mm. filmmaker Jagger Moore, because I, I kept thinking this episode the whole time, are we, is it like the filmmakers versus the fans here? You got filmmakers sitting here, and you have the fans that are, really love these movies, and you know, it's not like there's a versus here. It's just I think our brains are all wired differently to enjoyment and the reason we watch uh, we watch movies. You know, I think we all want to enjoy them. I think everybody that watches any movie wants to enjoy it, don't they? You never want to watch a movie just to hate it, do you? Uh, I don't think so. I'll say, so the answer to that is no, but I will say for this, mm-hmm. for Rise of Skywalker, I did go into it assuming it was going to be bad. Oh, interesting. Okay. And that's the, and that's the first time I've really done that with a Star Wars movie. Okay, so you went in well, pessimistic. Last three, right? I went into it being like, oh, this is probably going to suck, but I love Star Wars, so it's okay. All right. Jager, what did you think of your... Oh, sorry. What is your relationship with Star Wars, Dr. Phil? I grew up with it. My dad was hugely into it, and me and my siblings were always really into all the Star Wars. I grew up when the prequels came out. Uh, I think I was two years old when episode one came out. So I grew up with the prequels, and I did like them, and... You know, you could say some of that is nostalgia, but I rewatched them and I still like them. I can see why people don't like them, but uh, 
yeah, I've always liked Star Wars. And, you know, some of the things I might say in this podcast might make you think that I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. I was. Once upon a time. <laughs> once upon a time. I was. Galaxy far, far away I was. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you know, I like I liked the old Star Wars. I like George Lucas's Star Wars. Well, and he made one of them. And uh, no, two. Well, three. He, he's, he made three? He's been in charge of the stories for all of them. Yeah. No, di- I'm talking about directing. Well, he, no, he directed, no, he, uh, directed the tr- he directed the prequels and A New Hope. Yeah. He directed all of the prequels? Yes. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, all of them. No, what are they? Su- nah, oh. No, 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 oh, no, yeah, no. Yeah. Catch yeah. your tongue there. Anyway, so yeah. In the new trilogy, I liked The Force Awakens when it came out. I saw it again. You liked The Force Awakens? Okay, when cool. When it first came out. Oh. And then the no- stage one is denial. Okay. And then I'm I'm, I'm acceptance now. <laughs> Disney. Um, Did Disney sting you bad like a cobra? It's yes. Well, I mean, I mean, it's a movie, so I don't care that much. It's just like, yeah, it's only what you I, do for I, a I can't stand it when people say that they like the pre don't like the prequels, and then they'll say, but the new trilogy was sick. Oh, it's, mm. interesting. Okay, but so what? So what about the new? You just don't like the new trilogy? It makes no sense. Gotcha. It's fan fiction. I read that today, <laughs> and we'll get into that. That's that. I've been that. I wish I hadn't read that because I've read so much fan fiction over the years. I, I wish I didn't know that somebody compared it to fan fiction because now I can't unthink that. Yeah. But we'll mm-hmm. get into it. So that's everybody's history with Star Wars. Okay. You know where we all stand. Oh, fucking Andy's here. Yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting patiently. <laughs> hey, Andy. And I'm literally staring into your eyes the I know. whole time. It's because you see in my soul, not my All right, not Andy, fine. Take it away, but be brief. Oh, I will. Uh, oh, the, no, no, I'm just kidding. You can you can take as much time as you want. The original the original trilogy, love him to death. I've probably seen him like 25 times. Uh, my cousin was a huge uh, Star, Wars, uh, Star Wars fan, so I grew up watching with him, got that one box set. Then the- uh, The VHS the, box set? Yeah, the VHS yeah. box set, the original OG one. Got into the card game, too. I was uh, pretty good at it. Nerd alert! Uh, and then, you know, the, the prequels came out, and I fucking hated all of them. I wow. I still, watched the third one. So I haven't watched the that. third one yet. Uh, you know, I don't Revenge think the, you're qualified Revenge to talk the about the prequels, then, what? if you haven't seen the third I could, one. I couldn't do the it after one. the first two. I couldn't you, do it. You're no judge. of. You can't judge three movies in a trilogy when you've only seen two. Well, I'm judging two of them. The, based third, on the, the third one is the best pre- deal, prequel. And so I just couldn't You know get you're on it. the line with two Star Wars know, specialists, but right? but that's why I'm being honest. So, Time for Andy to leave. So you've been voted off the island. Sto- I like Jager. I used to like Star Don't Wars. Don't compare yourself to Jager. But then I did. So then I was like, after those movies, I was like, ah, yeah, whatever, Star Wars. But then with this new trilogy coming out. You're trying to gloss over this point, but this is pretty big for me. <laughs> is, this big, is this big to everybody else? He's saying the prequels are garbage, but he's never finished them? Yeah, you can't really. I mean... No, he he has a yeah, good. Yeah, you gotta point. watch. You know, you can watch. Though. You can if you don't like the movies, you don't like the movies. The third one's not gonna save them. Yeah, you miss the iconic. No, that's like saying if I didn't watch this last movie, I wouldn't think that the other two didn't suck. Okay, but I wouldn't say they all sucked if I hadn't seen them all. I would. Okay, you guys. I think episode three has like the best, like probably the best scene in all nine. You know when mm-hmm. on the Kylo, not Kylo. When Obi Wan and uh, Anakin were fighting, like towards yeah, the end there, like, that is a pretty powerful scene. Seen it all mine. Yeah, that's a, I I love that scene when he's on like the vo- it's a vol- the the river of lava and he's all burned up like Mustafa. You were the chosen one. Mm-hmm. Fuck you, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> you were such a hack. And but then <laughs> the new three came out and kind of pumped some air back into Star Wars. I enjoyed the. The new trilogy or the Skywalker saga, however you want to call it. You like The Force Awakens? Yeah, I, li- I like them all. And the you la- like the second one? The Last Jedi was my favorite out of the three. Ooh. Barf. Second favorite would be uh, Rise of Skywalker. Said barf. And then I wish he was here to barf on Force you. Awakens, yeah. But I, you know, you know, J.J. Uh, Abrams and Ryan Johnson pump some air back into this uh, trilogy for me or this this world for me. Okay, so we, le- we have a lot of opinions here. I don't think. I think what we all can agree on is Annie shouldn't be on the podcast anymore. And um, I don't have a second point. Now, Andy and Jagger actually agree about Andy's uh, denial of the third film. So Jagger's Jagger's one vote keeps him here. So that's fine. Now, I think the movie it has it has a lot of uh, it has a lot of alternate titles. 
from me. And I just want to share a couple with, with our Star Wars specialist. Number one, I think it should be called Star Wars Episode Nine: Sewing Up Loose Ends. Sure. Uh. Episode Nine: Damage Control. <laughs> damage Control. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I like that one. That's yeah. probably, yeah. <laughs> damage but, Control. But my favorite is yeah. uh, Star Wars Episode Nine: Horses in Space. <laughs> Yes. As soon as I, and for, for those of you who've seen the movie, as soon as I saw that, I was out. It's in the trailer. You don't even oh have to see that. I didn't watch, I don't watch trailers. I totally just remember that now that you said that. I, like, technically, what does, what does that mean? Oh. I think they're still in the atmosphere, though. Okay, technically, so. there are horses in space. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to argue that. And the, the best part about the all Star Wars movies besides the first, the original trilogy I have laughed out loud at something like that. And I kind of like it now. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? There's something that's like so ridiculous. Like I already mentioned, like the no in the Revenge of the Sith, right? Yeah. It's like those kind of moments, they just stick out to me. And I can't help it. I laugh in the theater and everybody throws malt balls at me and shit, but I don't care. I think that, I think it's okay <laughs> we to laugh them. at these moments because inherently this is a cheesy franchise. And if you go back to the incarnation of this script, I think I, I was talking to Sam and Joey about this a couple of weeks ago, when he first, George Lucas first made this movie and showed it to all his filmmaker buddies, the first comments out of, out of their mouths were like, what the fuck is up with this force thing? What is this? <laughs> like, this is like a soap opera in space. And he got so much shit for it. Of course, he laughed his way to the bank. But just reading the script, just watching this original movie with limited effects, because there was, we could talk about it, but there's, there were so many less effects. There was no title crawl, that kind of stuff. This movie was very bare bones and rickety, yeah. almost. And so that's what I always go back to and appreciate what it became, because it was the little movie that could, that was just a, a, a director out of USC film school. He wrote an original script based on Japanese sa samurais in space, and look what he did. He stuck to his guns and made a life. And then he made millions of fans' lives care about movies. So I don't really care if the movies are good or not. He made people care about movies. Yeah. So I always tip my hat to him. And he made it American Graffiti, and I'm a big fan of that movie. I like that. You know, he, he is a, a talented producer and a talented writer, George Lucas. And he gave us Star Wars. So our hat's off to him. At the beginning of this. Now let's shit all over the movie. No. <laughs> I'm ready. Well, if we're shitting all over The Rise of Skywalker, it has nothing to do with George Lucas. Ah, yeah, there you go. So. That's the rub, everybody. <laughs> so The Rise of Skywalker comes out, sewing up loose ends. For me, I'll tell you, I, I enjoyed the movie, but all spoilers in the air and in your ears, listeners. From the opening notes of the movie, thought I was watching Return of the Jedi, and it turns out mm -hmm. I was. Yes. It turns yeah. out I was watching Return of the Jedi, and the plot was secondary to the character development for me. I knew exactly where the plot was going uh, because I had already seen Return of the Jedi, but it was still fun to wrap up what the characters' motivations were and where they were going in this movie. That was the exciting part for me. It was how are they going to do this and how are they going to make this trilogy end? And hopefully it's not ridiculous. And I don't think it was, but I'll leave it to, to you all. Who wants to talk about the plot or the character development first? There was no character development and the plot was everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. I mean, it's what what time do we have to get into character development? You can start right now. I mean, like in that movie, mm. what time? There was none. They were just from A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It was too fast paced, you're saying? I mean, oh, because yeah. they had so much to cover. It's like it should have been more than one movie. They were trying to undo what The Last Jedi did. And they were trying to make mm -hmm. it make sense so it has an ending. And none of it made sense in doing so. I mean, this whole trilogy doesn't make sense in the first place. Mm -hmm. And the bad guy, <laughs> it, it doesn't. I mean, no, I'm laughing how is I, the First Order this. a thing? How do they come up and have that much power? How? Why is there <laughs> such thing as the resistance? What I'm happened to the New Republic? Questions. Well, I mean, it, it could be said for any type of conflict there's always a uh but no, wouldn't, but wouldn't but the first order be the resistance technically because the new republic became a thing after episode six well but that that then that got shot down this is the frustrating this is the frustrating part was, about this this is why i said i've seen in between i've seen a new hope remade into the first the skybender first yes and then i've seen return of the jedi remade into the rise of skywalker so I kept turning to Andy because I talk through the entire movie usually uh, when Andy sees it with me and he hates me. Yes. But I kept going, 
how is this? So they just built a bigger Death Star? That's that's the fun part about this remake? Yeah, yeah. to me, it just seemed like they were out of ideas. You yeah. Know, they just wanted to recycle what they had done in the past. Like, you know, while I, while I thought the Palpatine twist was, was cool, you know, but like, mm-hmm. still, I mean, you're bringing back an old character. The entire movie, like, did we really have to follow Ray, Poe, and Finn to find that whatever navigator thing so that they can find their way to the plant? Like, that was just such like a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Right? I agree. That was uh, it was a diversionary was tactics. A time. Yeah, yep. a lot of it was a waste of time because they had to pander to the fan base, like the casino chase the, in the in the second exactly, remake movie. Exactly. That drove me fucking crazy. It was like Worst that part. scene in, exactly. in the remake of King Kong where the dinosaurs fight for an hour. And you're going, where the hell is King Kong? He's not even in this scene. <laughs> like, can we get to the fucking Empire State Building with Jack Black? But hold on. This is a movie with a lot of flaws, and it doesn't make any sense. So why are we giving it a pass? Is it because it has the title of Star Wars on it? Because that's what I feel like it is. I hear so many people saying that for all its flaws, it was still Star Wars, and I still love it. If it wasn't Star Wars, would you love it? If it had a different title on it, would it be as good? And Joe, I don't think- that's a question for you. Uh, absolutely. Like, if it had a different title on it, then I wouldn't like it. But, you know, I just, I like Star Wars, man. And that's kind of the, I, I give it a pass. Like, do I enjoy the way it ended? No, but it's Star Wars, so I'm not going to have any, you know, ill content towards it. So you didn't so, like so it. You, so does that mean that you liked the prequels? Uh, I love, I, like I said before, episodes one and two were definitely my least favorite. I love, episode three was by far my favorite, so... Yeah, you like you know, that one too, Jager, right? I, I like the prequels. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, no, I, like I, I, I enjoyed all of them. Do I feel one and two were the worst ones? Absolutely. But that's just, again, me. Well, now but, it's your turn, you Joe. Let's, let's hear how you, what did you really think about this one, the newest one, The Rise of Skywalker? Well, I mean, you guys touched on it and Sam touched on it too, but like the whole filmmaker versus fan thing, like I mm-hmm. totally agree that this was a movie made for your average fans to kind of sell things and it kind of showed in some of the things that went on like i i the only reason ray and kylo kissed was because fans wanted to see it yeah that was ridiculous that to happen yeah. and i hated it even more that like people stood up and clapped when it happened yeah in our theater I like, too oh, that, i was like that, that, stop it That's i that. cringed when people would even make a reaction to the movie like, if I heard it, oh, I'd like to shut up. I just kept thinking about how, like, that guy obviously has never been laid in his life. Think about what that sex would have been like, though. He would have been like, ah! <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Ray would have been like, I cannot handle this guy. Like, he's got so much pent up aggression. And Ray's she like, handle, dude, she could just force him. I'm a fucking herself. Jedi. You're the dark side. And some people like the dark side in sex, but I don't know. You like his dark side. They, you know, nobody really, nobody died. Like, I'm not counting Palpatine and then you know, Kylo at the end, but like, you know, when that transporter blew up and I thought Chewie was in it, that, that got me excited. I was like, Oh shit. They me too. Killed somebody off. Like, it's awesome. That yeah. was a great moment. Like, oh, How many times did somebody come back to life in this movie? That's the problem. How they, many times? They never make a decision. You got to If you're going to give us a plot point that changes the shit, you got to own it. Like Ryan Johnson did. Yes. I, well, now, okay. Go ahead. Sam. Yeah. I think that's hard only because, uh, and I literally just thought of this, but I think that's hard because everybody knew who was going to die for sure, for sure. In this movie? Yes. Who did yeah. you who, who did you know who was, was going who, to die? Who for sure, for sure was going to die in this movie? Tell me. Oh, I didn't know anybody. Palpatine. Oh well, I knew Palpatine because good always wins in the Star Wars universe. I right? thought I thought um, uh, Adam Driver Leia. was going to die. I didn't, oh yeah, Princess Leia was going to die, but because Carrie Fisher. Is yeah prematurely died. I right? thought that so they you handled knew already. Princess Leia was gonna die. Yes. So there's one huge death already. <laughs> yeah, but they carried right? the whole so... whole movie with her as a CGI person in this. She movie. wasn't CGI. That was like outtakes and stuff from that was the other movies. Unused footage. Yeah, which unused I thought they did footage. that. That was one good thing about this for me. For me, you know, is, uh... I, I I didn't mind that either. I think they did um, a good job with it. Like, it wasn't facial oh, correction. Yeah, no, for sure. Mm-hmm. Some of it was, but I don't think so. They added a little bit of gray Fact to her check. hair to make um to make, make her look real. a little older. Really? Because of 
the time passage. I thought it was um, facial rec- or, uh, recreation the entire way. I that's so oh, strange. Yeah. Really, it was unused footage. There was only one facial uh, recreation that was um, young for Jedi training scene. Yeah. Going back, going back to it. Everybody had, well, not everybody had to, but like there were a lot of deaths and then people came back to life. It's because you already knew one of the biggest characters in the entire Star Wars Skywalker saga, Princess Leia, is going to die. But that's you real life. Knew that. I don't want to know. You I don't want to factor in real life with no, mo- with a movie. No, but it wasn't real life. There was no like. How are you gonna? How are you going to have Princess Leia continue to live when there's only eight minutes of footage that they're gonna yeah. use? The Irishman did it. <laughs> I f- yeah, I feel like they could have found a way to let her live. And one of those is gonna be nominated for Best Picture. Not this movie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's the thing. I don't think that this is so a sudden. bad movie. I think it's no. better than The Force Awakens. But I think it is The Last Jedi. How is this not a bad movie if it doesn't make sense? Because I felt satisfied. I felt satisfied. I went, what I'm I'm with um I'm with Joe and Sam on the entertainment. In aspect. the in the aspect of what do you expect? It's this Star Wars. So I'm not gonna say it's a bad movie. It's just I didn't think I didn't go into and think it it wasn't gonna be a bad movie. I didn't go into think it was gonna be a good movie. It just for what it is. Yeah, there you go, kids. Enjoy yeah. that. That's fun. You did it. You did it from A to B to C. And I'm not going to shit on any filmmaker for going in and as as I think that he thinks and like a lot of people are saying, save a franchise. I think he, J.J. Abrams thinks mission accomplished. I think all the fans like like think, you know, mission accomplished on Rise of Skywalker. Definitely problems with the film. <coughs> but now we can continue on a different narrative. Now it's yeah. over. Don't you think with that attitude that is why they get away with this type of stuff. Absolutely, though. but I ain't going to change it because yeah. that movie made like $575 million well, it's already. It's the same thing with the whole entire Avengers universe and things like that. It's these big name box brands right. that no matter what you put out... It's like are, cereal. Yeah, people are going to love Frosted At least those Flakes. make sense and they're like somewhat well written out. You know, they, they go from movie to movie to movie to well, movie. Well, they, ca- they came from comic books where there's actual details versus... And history. And, his- and good it, writers too. Yeah. Like those, those original comic book development of those characters... The mythology is the coolest thing about them. Where yeah. those characters came from, how they were developed in the mythos of American culture, too. Those are books that you know transcended into the world's mythic culture. Yeah. I mean, the history of this, the Marvel Universe, that's what I love the most about it. Yeah, Star Wars is kind of the same thing. It's like, it's so insanely expansive. But if they erased every movie except for the original trilogy, I wouldn't be that bummed out. Is that either. sacrilegious say? I don't know, Sam. I'm looking at you, Joey. I can't see you, but is that uh, sacrilege? No, I mean for me, no. Yeah, I think it is just because I love episode three. So you love that one, so that yeah, you at least keep. And you got to have. If you're gonna do three. You got to have them all then. All yeah, six. so then, no, yeah, yeah, it is sacrilege to say to get rid of all of them because I can't get rid of three. Yeah, I don't I'd know. Be perfectly happy with four, five, and six alone. All right, now this is what I want to do. Since we've all had a criticism of the movie, now I'm gonna force everybody to be nice. Yeah. And that won't be hard for the Disney enthusiasts, or Disney enthusiasts, or the Marvel. What, what are we calling you again? I can't remember. Specialist. Specialist. The Disney specialist and Joe are uh, Star Wars specialists. But we're all going to go around and, and we have to talk about what we liked about the movie. You got to say something. All right. I got, and, some, uh, I got a couple of things. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I want to go to Jager first, though. <laughs> I need more time to think. All right. Jager's going to think about it. OK, <laughs> cool. Joe, you go first. You spoke up. I think first and foremost, what made me like the movie more was that there were just less jokes. Like, there were still some, but I feel like Force Awakens and The Last Jedi were just so bombarded with trying to be funny and all these sort of things. That that just turned me off to those as well. So I did appreciate the fact that there were less jokes in this one. You know, I think the the lightsaber battles between Kylo and Rey, I thought they were both pretty cool. Um, I think one thing that I took away from it that I actually thought about as I was walking to this car I'm sitting in right now, but... There was a lot of tension for me throughout the film, like whether it was sexual you know, Kylo in the beginning, just killing everybody, um, you know, Ray almost going to that switch to where, oh, am I going to go bad? I don't know. Like sort of thing. I just felt like there was a lot of tension. Um, and I kind of I kind of like that, like all the killing. You know, I think that kind of uh, made me enjoy it just a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I've been going back and forth between this but i I do think it was kind of tight that Leia was just like a super dope jedi like way doper than luke but we just never saw it uh, <laughs> you know, that that is, one scene. i did like that too all right sam positive things about the movie 
Uh, my number one was seeing Leia training as a Jedi. That was mm-hmm. the bomb for me. Um, even though it only lasted for like 30 seconds, yeah, it was but quick. even less than 30 seconds, but holy smokes, that was like all of my dreams coming true. Don't um, you mean holy snokes? Thank you. No. Thank you. Thank you. Up high. <laughs> yep. I, actually, uh, I just gave you an air five. I disagree <laughs> with you, Joe, about the jokes. Like, C- C-3PO, I was so annoyed with him and how much he was talking and <laughs> trying to make jokes. Like, oh my gosh. There was, one, there was one point in the movie where I turned to the person that I was seeing the movie with. I'm like, why the fuck is C-3PO <laughs> talking so much? And she like looked at me. She's like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I like that the three heroes, so Poe, Finn, and Ray, finally got to work together and they were sharing scenes together. Um, I felt like their bond wasn't as close as I understood it. Anybody else? Their, it was their well, bond wasn't as tension and war. They were really like the crying. I, I felt like the last scene when they all cry and say goodbye to each other. I was like, that's like the cast saying goodbye to each other. Yeah, it's probably just that. I don't know. I, yeah. I, that's that's just me. I didn't get the love the three shared for each other, even though I I've seen the movies. I didn't. I didn't. It's not as deep as what it's they. It's because originally. they weren't really together ever in <coughs> uh, in the other two movies. That's why. Yeah. And for some reason, they don't have Wi-Fi in Star movie. Wars. But in Lord of the Rings, they were never really together. And you could still set, tell that they were all friends. But they were yeah. a fellowship. Yeah, they started out as a fellowship, though. So weird. And that broke I off guess. into their group. I kept thinking about Lord of the Rings the entire movie. That's yeah. so weird. I mean, I thought, about, I thought about so many things during this movie. I was spacing out like I was in space. Wow, there's another one. Move. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it was. <laughs> it, it wasn't keeping my attention because... I was seeing where the plot was going yeah. again. But thank you, Sam. Jagger Moore, you yeah. had time to think? It was in focus, which was nice. <laughs> um, the, mu- the music was nice. You know, I like Star Wars music. Oh, yeah. Only the, I, I mean, music. I can't like you tell- could just have this on CD. You could do any movie. But that's one th- I, I mean, you want positive things. Oh, so sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> He's doing his best. But all, like the, the, stuff, all the stuff character. that was good in this movie about the music was from the older movies. Gotcha. I don't remember any new themes in this movie. Yes, um, John Williams. But yeah, John, John Williams, Williams did good. Uh, I liked Kylo Ren. I liked Adam Driver. I think he's a good actor. Uh, I think My I man. wish they would have done more with his character. Uh, it still was very Marvel quippy. And uh, yeah, C-3PO talked a lot, but he was, I mean, it reminded me of uh, The Empire Strikes Back a little bit with him. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. No, you're good. Andy, something positive. I need to throw some water on Jagger. All right. So, I mean, here's the thing, right? I mean, it's not this movie. You see the characters and like, I just love the characters that they have in this. Like, it's a movie. Of course you see well, no, the characters. But the new, the new regime of, you know, Oscar Isaac, Daisy Ridley, John Boyega. Regime? Adam, yeah, it's like the, they're the good guys. Yeah, well, and then Adam Driver as well, but just the cast. You know I, the SS, as we call them. I did. I like that. You know, they finalized the characters that we came to love. I don't think they did a lot of character development in here, but the fact that they're like, all right, now we know what happened to them. I'm satisfied. That was my favorite thing about it. I was like, oh I like God. these fucks. All right, they're cool. <laughs> I get a beer with them. Oh. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't get a beer with Poe? Like that's Kylo, for sure. Yeah, I know. Hey, I didn't realize that Poe was an asshole until this movie, though. He's oh, he's the rogue. He's like the the hothead. Yeah, but I didn't think he's he was that big guy. a hothead. Like I thought he was perfectly rational in in the second in, in the, the last in the, la- in, in the last in the second yet. one. I thought he was perfectly rational to like try to take away Laura Dern Laura Dern's command. He's an ace. She was acting like a psycho. Wild card. You know, <laughs> please. But then she had like the best death scene of, of right. It, like that's top five death scenes in Star Wars when she light speeds it through that ship. Oh fuck, that's yeah. pretty yeah. badass. Yeah. I thought that was mm-hmm. a pretty good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sam, do you like that too? Bad. It's too bad it came after Leia floating through space. Yeah, I know. Everybody was reeling <laughs> but, from that. But now from this movie, it makes sense because she was a badass Jedi, and that's why she was able to float through space. So would you retract that now? No, no I would cut we knew she that badass. Out. Oh. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone agrees. Okay, I agree too. I agree too. In your body, like you're not floating. Rabble, 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 rabble. <laughs> <laughs> like the town square is up in arms about that scene. Let me tell you, nobody likes that fucking scene. Cut no, it out. Nobody. Oh my god. I feel like as so. time has gone on, people have started liking the prequels more. Yeah, they have. And as time has gone on, people have started liking the sequels less. Yeah. Like I have. I liked The Force Awakens when it first came out, and now I never want to watch it again. <laughs> and same with The Rise of. Or, uh, the Last Jedi. Right. You have a lot of people who walked out of that theater, and I remember I argued with a few people where they were like, "No, this movie was really good. It was really good." And then 
a year later, they're like, yeah, you know, maybe not. Well, I've only seen it once, and I loved it. I've only seen and it And I tried to watch it the second time, and I went, fuck this movie. The second time, I liked, I liked and it And it wasn't so about much. plot points. It's just, there's something about these movies where I go, <coughs> I, it's not original enough for me. And that's why I liked that The Last Jedi the most. It was at least a movie that took all of the shit that people were going to say on Twitter no matter what, and he went, fuck it, I'm doing my movie. And as a filmmaker, you can't not give that guy props for going, I don't care. Star Wars isn't his movie. It is. That movie's his movie. Well, uh, that's like writing uh, a fourth Lord of the Rings and saying, well, this is my book now. It's not. It, J.R. Tolkien wrote that. George Lucas wrote Star Wars. It's his stuff. And I feel like making a new trilogy out of stories that weren't his ideas and going against his advice when he sold it to Disney is pretty much just a slap in the face to not only George Lucas but Star Wars fans. But I'd be in line to smack George Lucas in the face for making the prequels. He made the original trilogy. <laughs> he made Star Wars. It, he made, it did. all made sense. It, yeah, the original makes sense. I, I don't think anything makes sense beyond that though. I don't think it makes sense to slap I can, the I four, five, agree, and six on there. I can agree with you that one, two, and three might not have the best scripts. Are these episode have, one, two, and three? Yeah, episode okay. one, two, and three might not have the best scripts and stuff. but Or the, best acting. Or, or the best acting. And there's a lot of criticisms you can make for it. <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't disagree with you on a lot of it. But the story makes sense going into four, five, and six. That's George Lucas's vision for his mm -hmm. series, his, uh, his stories. And six, seven, eight don't, or what is it? Seven, eight, nine don't make sense. In a Turning lot of the aspects. Me. And if you look into it, they went against a lot of the stuff. Pretty much everything George Lucas wanted for the sequels, if he were to ever make them. And I'm not saying if George Lucas made sequels, they'd be any better. But at least they would be his Star Wars. And I'd rather see George Lucas's Star Wars than Disney's yeah. Star Wars. Oh, I agree with you totally. And it'd yeah. be consistent totally. across yeah. the board. Yeah. It'd be consistent <laughs> across the board. Yeah. yeah. There's no way anybody comes in and knocks this out of the park, no. these new episodes. No way. And if anybody thinks there is a way, they're insane. And that's the folly to me but, of Ryan Johnson. He did the punk rock thing when this is my version. I want to do it. They hired me to do a job. He turned in his movie. He still had that casino scene. So I think he's, he's still catered to the studio. Yeah. But he did it. But he's still to blame for thinking he could get away with something like that. You can't. You absolutely can't. You're not going to be the guy that comes in, shakes this up, and walk away and say, everybody was really mean to me about it. It's like, Ryan, did you talk to anybody about doing this first? Did you? I, I would have read that script before I saw the movie. <laughs> yeah. I would have went, holy shit, dude, this is punk rock as fuck, and I love you for it, but be prepared to move to Tahiti afterwards. <laughs> right. I think that's you as a filmmaker saying that, though. I am a filmmaker. What are you talking about? I know, but about? you're also a movie goer, right? I, I, if you would, one, if you one in the movies, same. If so one in the same, movies, man. Would you have that same so opinion? I think Absolutely. As a fan, when I watched it, it was like, fuck, man, look at this movie. This is insane. And I love that about movies when even if insane doesn't mean good or bad, it's still you take chances as an artist. I love that, man. And I could walk away from a performance art that it doesn't make any sense to me, but because it's so original and new, I'd go, man, that those people really did something crazy on stage. Good on them. <laughs> and then I go on with my day because it's just Star Wars, man. Like you said, like all of us have just said, it's just Star Wars. Yeah. Let's wrap it up. Let's go around one more time and just final thoughts on episode nine, The Rise of Skywalker. <coughs> Got it. Sam, we'll start with you. Anything that you left out you want to talk about or something you want to say about the movie? I always think about like how this trilogy has added or not necessarily subtracted from the whole entire story, but I think a couple of things definitely like took the Skywalker saga in a completely different direction. That's definitely Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi. And like I said, newfound respect. I can, I can get why he, you know, wanted to, you know, do something different. And this trilogy definitely needed to do something different. I just think he took it way too far out. Had he done something different but kept the lore a little more, <coughs> then the rise of Skywalker would not have had to have done as much damage control as it had to have done. The pacing would have been better. There probably would have been a little more story and character development. 
And then the other thing that I think kind of derailed the Skywalker saga was Carrie Fisher's premature death. Because I think the story would have gone in, in a completely different direction had she still been alive. Interesting. And then I think the overall trilogy would have been a lot better and more consistent. And then finally, as a huge Star Wars fan, I am very sad that it is over for now. And I think that emotion comes from the fact that the trilogy didn't really live up to what it could have been for those reasons that I just listed. Well said. Thank you, Sam. Joey, final thoughts on Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. Almost. You know, these last three, you know, everything was just extremely rushed. And I think that's where the beauty of how these episodes were released, the prequels were released, you know, it, it allowed to see that development. It allowed to, even with four, five, and six, man, like nothing ever seemed rushed in those. But then they come out with, you know, the prequels and episodes one through three, and you allowed the opportunity to see more of that character development. And I think with these last three, there just wasn't that opportunity there. So they kind of had to cram everything into three episodes, and it just didn't work out. And I'm with her, you know, obviously. It is sad that, you know, yes, I mean, do I think it's the last one? No, but I mean, the, the lore isn't really as high as it could be. You know, I think that took a big, a big hit in these three. Um, I'm hoping they can bounce back. But, you know, as soon as episode nine is available on DVD, I'm going to buy it. I'm going <laughs> to watch episodes one through nine in order. I'll tell you that much. But you don't, don't you watch? Oh, yeah, you watch them from the actual episode one to the end, right? Uh, if I'm watching a new, like for Rise of Skywalker, if a new episode's coming out, then I'll go one through. I'll start with one. Wow. And we've had this discussion before. If I'm introducing this series to a new individual who's never seen Star Wars, I'm yeah. starting with episodes four. Okay, that's Which smart. you definitely did not do in the past. <laughs> no, you always ask me how I watch them, and I watch them one through <laughs> I specifically remember you introducing Star Wars to somebody and no, starting episode me. one. That's, 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 <laughs> that's why we brought them on. Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> when the specialists it, try to kill each other like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You, know, you owned up, you owned or a good up movie. to your mistake. You owned, you owned up to it. So I, I, I will call you on that. I should watch you. it. I should be watching it. No, you owned up to, you made the mistake of introducing it to somebody with episode one first. Hey, I was drunk. I don't remember what I was saying. (laughs) I love both of you guys because we we just have a private conversation while you guys did this. This is great. You guys could have your own podcast on Star Wars. You guys should do this. Thank you, Joe. Let's move on. You You guys can fight on your own time. Just don't do that to somebody new. Just don't do that to somebody new. Mm -hmm. I have to hear from... Jagger Moore first, final thoughts, and then we'll get to Andy because I forgot Andy was here. Uh, but Jagger, you're 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 first. Listen, Andy's here. If yeah. you, <laughs> I'm here. If you like Star Wars, I'm not telling you not to go see this movie. But if I were you, I wouldn't go see this movie one because you don't want to give Disney your money because they have too much, they ruined <laughs> too much, and this isn't a good movie. If you want to see something cheesy, go into the grocery store and just chill on the dairy aisle for two and a half hours. You'll get the same out of it. <laughs> All right, don't give Disney your money. If you want to see something worth seeing this holiday, go see 1917, something that actually has good filmmaking, good storytelling. You know, this isn't Star Wars. If you like Star Wars and, you know, I don't know. I like Star Wars and I didn't like this. And I would, I hear a lot of people saying, if you like Star Wars, I'd go see this movie. I think if you like Star Wars enough, you just let it end at episode six. And you just pretend this never happened. And that's what I'm going to do. This never happened. (laughs) So the scene. next up is Andy and Andy kind of did what Jager's talking about. He went to the prequels yeah. and then by episode three, he took Jager's advice back then and went, nope, this isn't my Star Wars. Fuck Revenge of the Sith. But you have two people on this podcast that are like, that was kind of the best one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, OK. But like, here's the thing. 
I finished this trilogy, so that says something, right? I wanted to go see the last wow. the last movie. I enjoyed, like I said at the beginning of this podcast. So you're saying this trilogy was better than the prequels? Better than the prequels. Okay. Yeah, for me. All for right. me, personally, right? Well, the, you're talking. Yeah. If you would have said this earlier in the podcast. You would have killed him. There would have been more blood. Forth <laughs> but, you know, I thought. I, you you're know, lucky we're wrapping it up. Yeah. Like, could this movie, did this movie need an extra half hour to actually, like, No, pro- no, no, it did not. <laughs> what are you properly? talking about? They, they, they could have. No. See, like. Are you they needed kidding another me? movie if they wanted to make right. it. Right. I think I think another I think another twenty minutes, you cut out a bunch of the Palpatine fucking setup shit. It's Palpatine. Palp whatever. The series doesn't. is an extra three movies. It's like an orange. It does juice. not need another three movies, Joey. <laughs> Shut the hell up right now. Do not start this all over again. For my final thoughts with uh five <coughs> people and their opinions, there's nothing I can say that I need to reiterate other than I agree with all of you on this movie. <coughs> Except for Jager. <laughs> yeah. You don't no, agree with me. No, no, I so agree with you. I so agree with with your points. I just think if I here's here's what I think about movies like this: Marvel Universe, Star Wars, the Star Trek remakes, all this shit. If I sign up to go to a theme park and ride a roller coaster, I'm gonna probably know what I got by the end of that roller coaster ride. Because I bought the ticket and I went to see it. And that was like that's like going to see these movies for me. I bought the ticket knowing that it's just to me, these movies are eating cotton candy for dinner. I'm not going to be totally full and satisfied. Nay, I say I might be a little bit sick because I ate cotton candy for dinner. But I ate cotton candy for dinner. And I like cotton candy to a certain degree, not for dinner. But I felt satisfied because I ate something. That may seem passive aggressive or that may seem totally aggressive. But that's the way I feel about these movies. It's still fun to go to a theme park. It's still fun to eat cotton candy, just not for dinner. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Again, thank you to Sam Brown, Samantha Brown, for joining us. Sam, anything you want to plug? You on Twitter, Instagram, anything like that? No, no, I'm good. But thank you so much for having me on again. Okay. Absolutely. It was a pleasure having you. And thank you, Joey Velez. We loved having you for the first time. We'd like to have you back. Yeah, man. Hey, when Matrix 4 comes out, I'll be ready, man. (laughs) That's going to be a hell of a day. (laughs) That's going to be a Keanu double feature. And, uh, Thank you, Jager Moore, filmmaker Jager Moore, I always like to say, because go check out his films. He's all over the internet with his photography and with his uh, independent films. I'm a big fan of his. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. Okay, where, can, where can they find you? Uh, my name, Jager Moore, J-A-E-G-A-R. It's going to try and correct it to E-R, but it's A-R. And uh, Andy Pesci, I guess you were here. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Hey, man, <laughs> last episode of the decade. I'm, I'm glad we got everyone together. It was That's a real right. knocker. It's the last episode of the four seasons of film for the decade that was the 2010s. We want to thank all our fans for joining us this far. Our Spotify numbers came out, and we are excited to say we reached over 200,000 listeners this year. So we want to thank you in all our top countries to bottom countries. It's been a hell of a year. Keeps getting bigger every year. And uh, I'm excited to continue in 2020 and the 2020s. So keep film alive. From Nathan Robert Blackburn, check us out at fourscenesoffilm.com. Ah, it's been a hell of a decade, Andy. Yes, it has. And it's only getting bigger. Again, thank you to our guests. Keep film alive. Goodbye to the decade. We'll see you in 2020. Four Seasons of Film Podcast, episode 323, and out. Out.